NASA this morning believes it's found the most Earth-like planet yet. Kepler 452b is named for NASA's Kepler telescope. The space agency calls it an older, bigger cousin to Earth. Lee Billings is the space and physics editor of Scientific American. Lee, good morning. Good morning. I think the first thing we were all thought when we heard this was, well, can we go there? And then I read that given the mass of this planet, we'd all weigh twice as much. And I thought maybe I don't <laughs> want to be there. No way. <laughs> How much like Earth is it? Well, we know that it's about 60% larger than Earth. And it's most importantly around a sun-like star in a 385-day orbit. Remember, we orbit in yeah. 365 days. So if you put plants there, for instance, uh, you know, they'd photosynthesize just fine. Uh, the light there would be wonderful. We could get a great tan. Uh, but as you said, it's uh, potentially up to about five times more massive than Earth, so heavier than Earth. Uh, so it could have a much thicker atmosphere, uh, lots of active volcanoes, things like that. What does it mean, this exoplanet? <laughs> well, what it means is that it, it seems like there's lots and lots of potentially Earth-like planets out there for us to go find uh, all throughout the cosmos. And so, could there be life on it? Yeah, there, that's, a, that's a great yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. There could be life, uh, potentially. Uh, but, you know, we really don't know. This thing is 1,400 light years away, right. really far. Uh, what we'd want to do is find planets that are like this closer to us in the cosmos that we could look at uh, and investigate more deeply for signs of life. Uh, looking and it's in this so-called um, uh, Goldilocks zone, as you call it, right? Not too hot, not too cold. Just right for liquid water, which, as as we know, is the cornerstone of life. And given the, I mean, I think one of the things that I read with the, 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 that interested scientists was that given the age of this planet, they felt there was enough time for possibly life to have developed, yes? Yes, that's one way that the planet's different. It's about a billion and a half years older than our own, so it's maybe a version of our Earth, a supersized version of our Earth in the future. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and the big picture takeaway here is, again, that there's just, huge numbers of planets that we go find uh, and, and investigate for signs of life and uh, learn whether or not we're alone. You know, we all remember when there were only nine planets in the whole known universe 20 years ago. Now there are thousands of them right. and we can go out and look and try Well, that's find. the significance of Kepler, isn't it? I mean, which was launched back in 09. I mean, it's considered the most successful planet finder ever, right? Yeah, absolutely. And what Kepler's really trying to do is pin down precisely how prevalent Earth-like planets are around sun-like stars in our galaxy. And by knowing that number, by knowing how many stars around us have potentially Earth-like planets, we can essentially scope the, the big telescopes we're going to need in the future to go look at their atmospheres for signs of life, oxygen, methane, things like that, that here on Earth, life gives off. So with all these Earth-like planets, how could we discover if there is life on any of them? So as I, what we want to do is we want to build a big space telescope. That's kind of the $5 billion question, you could say. That might be about how much it's going to cost to do one of these things. Uh, it could be $5 billion, $10 billion, maybe $1 billion. Again, depending upon how frequent uh, planets are out there for us to find and look at that are like Earth. So if there's one around the nearest star that's four light years away, we could build something pretty small and look at its atmosphere for things like oxygen or methane or water vapor to tell that it's like Earth. If the nearest Earth-like planet is 10 or 100 light years away, we're going to have to build something a lot bigger and a lot more expensive. Well, that's a very exciting find. And if they're listening to us and watching, hello, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Billings, thank you.